Ecology is the branch of science that studies how living organisms interact with one another and also with their environments. The ecological questions are very diverse and the scope of the questions that one can ask in ecological studies ranges from fairly narrow to incredibly broad. So we're going to take a look at the types of questions ecologists can ask from organismal ecology um, to population ecology, community ecology, and finally ecosystem level ecology. Organismal ecology deals with individual organisms. Um, these are studies that look at adaptations that allow individuals to live or to be a good fit in their specific habitats. Questions about organismal ecology can be morphological, um, so looking at form, physiological, so looking at function, or potentially uh, behavioral, so some, the way that an organism acts within its environment. Um, a good example that we'll sort of use to look at these different levels of ecology is um, the Carner blue butterfly. So the Carner blue butterfly, pictured here, um, is a federally endangered species. So learning about the ecology of this organism is important so that uh, that knowledge can contribute to conservation efforts for the species. So for example, Carner blue butterfly females will only lay their eggs on uh, the leaves of the wild lupin plant. So without the lupin present in the habitat, the butterfly won't lay eggs. It specifically needs to have lupin. The caterpillars when they hatch out will only eat the leaves of the wild lupin. And um, as adults, the butterflies use nectar from the lupin flowers. So there's a very close interaction between those two species. And um, so questions looking at how the Carner blue butterfly behaves, that's that preferential overposition on wild lupin um, and sort of its dependence upon that other species as a host would be an example of a question that you could look at at the organismal level. As we broaden our scope up to the level of population ecology, um, we're looking at interactions between members of populations, so members of the same species living in the same area at the same time, um, interbreeding with one another potentially, um, at least interacting with one another as members of a population. So um, described as conspecifics. Conspecifics are organisms that are all members of the same species. So if you're looking at a population, you're looking at all of those individuals of the same species um, in that area. So examples of things that you can look at in population ecology are what we consider demographics. So demographics are questions like, how large is the population? What's the population size? Um, what is the population density? How are the individuals using the habitat? How are they distributed? Um, how old are individuals at first reproduction? How many offspring do individuals produce? So questions about how populations uh, grow and change over time would all be examples of questions that you can ask in population ecology. So if we stick with our example of our Carner blue butterflies, a simple population count um, in a particular area would be a good example of a, of a question in population ecology. Because they are federally endangered, just knowing how many individuals are present in a particular region could be useful information. Um, if you wanted to look at the lupin, because the butterflies depend on the lupin, so we may be curious about what's going on there, you could also study the density and distribution of the lupin populations. You could look at factors that are influencing how well the lupin are doing in a particular habitat, so uh, weather conditions or soil quality and those types of things, um, and how they affect the population growth and size um, and ultimately success of lupin. So just looking at an individual population and sort of how it's changing and the factors that are influencing those changes would be considered questions at the level of population ecology. At the level of community ecology, we are asking even more broad types of questions. We're looking at interactions uh, within communities and a community it consists of all of the populations that live in the same area at the same time, that interact with one another. Um, 
So we're talking about heterospecifics, which are members of different species that are interacting with one another um, in the same habitat. So interactions can be things like um, competition or predation or um, in the case of our of our Carner blue butterflies and the wild lupin, you're talking about a sort of host um, symbiosis type relationship. So no population ever lives in isolation. There are always going to be multiple populations living together and interacting. And when you look at those interactions and how one species can influence the other species, that is sort of taking it to the next level of a community ecology. So looking back again at our Carner blue butterflies and our wild lupin, if we're taking both populations into consideration and asking questions about how they affect one another, um, we're doing community ecology. So a couple of examples of questions that we can ask would be something like, how does the density of the lupin affect population sizes of the butterflies? Um, or another example would be, how does the timing of lupin germination affect the timing of butterfly reproduction? So um, flower availability or leaf availability, does that have any influence on when the butterflies lay their eggs or is there some other factor at play that influences their reproductive cycles. So looking at those species interactions and the forces that drive those interactions would be considered community ecology. And finally, the broadest category that we're looking at um, is at the level of the ecosystem. So ecosystem ecology is going to take into consideration all of the living or biotic components of um, a habitat so all of the communities, all of the populations within a particular area, but also including the abiotic or the non-living components that um, contribute to the ecosystem. So air quality, water supply, uh, soil nutrient availability, weather patterns, all of these things that are non-living factors, but that still have a tremendous influence on the living organisms in an area uh, is, is encompassed within the ecosystem. So. Other uh, things that we consider in ecosystem ecology are questions about how energy flows through an ecosystem. In most of the living systems that we examine, um, energy is going to enter the system as light from the sun, and it's going to exit the system as heat, as a byproduct of um, cellular respiration and metabolism. And then we also look at how nutrients move within a system. So just as we, we mentioned energy flows through, um, sort of enters and exits a system. Nutrients tend to cycle within a system. So they go between living and non-living uh, components of the ecosystem and sort of cycle through in, uh, in the nutrient cycle. So sticking again with our example of the Carner blue butterfly and the wild lupin, um, if we look at the level of ecosystem, these species uh, do really well. They, they inhabit uh, a habitat that is described as an oak pine barren. Um, oak pine barrens are fire dependent habitats. So the barren part of the habitat is sort of empty, scrubby, um, barren soil, which is really good for the lupin to grow. So on the sort of the fringes of the habitat, you've got pine trees and you've got some oak trees um, without uh, frequent wildfire to come in and sort of clear that soil, the uh, trees and larger plants can move in and encroach on the barren habitat and sort of take away from the ability of the lupin to grow successfully. They get shaded out uh, or they're outcompeted for nutrients. Um, and so the, the oak pine barren is dependent upon frequent burning to clear that soil. So the, in this case, the example of the non-living component would be the fire. So fire comes in and um, sort of sets, resets the, the ecology of the system. The fire also helps to cycle nutrients, so returning um, nutrients that are trapped in living tissues or, um, or tissues of, t of plants that have died and fallen down. Um, those are released and sort of recycled into the system each time the habitat burns. Um, the reason that it's important to maintain the community structure through allowing for natural wildfires or in, in some cases prescribed burning for conservation 
is because these uh, oak pine barrens are home to multiple species that are of conservation concern, including, of course, our Carner blue butterflies. So ultimately, ecology is, again, the study of living organisms and the habitats that they live in, how living things interact with one another, how they interact with their environments, um, how they obtain energy, how they use that energy. And really the important message is that ecology is the study of where we live, right? So the word actually comes from the Greek root oikos, which means house, um, and ology of course is the study of something. So we're looking at the study of our home. We're looking at where we live and where all the other organisms on the planet live and how those systems interact with one another and how they influence one another. And that's important to think about because it doesn't matter if you are an organismal ecologist or an ecosystem ecologist, none of these uh, exist in a vacuum. So there are always gonna be interactions between um, what's going on at the organismal level, the population level, the community level, and the ecosystem level. But um, these were just some examples of sort of the scope of questions that ecologists can ask, and um, hopefully that helps clear that up a little bit.